right. So thank you all so much for coming today and spending your time with me. Um, today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about my journey over the past three years into the R community. Um, I hope you find this talk gives you whatever you need, maybe inspiration, motivation, or confidence that you, you can be what you want to be in the R community as well. So I definitely want to give a huge shout out to R Ladies Global. It's an amazing organization, um, which has provided many homes for me. Um, if you do anything today, join Our Ladies Slack. Uh, it's a great place to connect and ask questions in a safe place. This talk was initially developed for Our Ladies Miami in April, and I want to thank Our Ladies Coventry and Our Ladies Utrecht um, for having me today to repeat this talk, and I'm really happy to reach a larger global audience across different time zones as well. If at any point during the talk you have questions, I'm going to try to pause frequently to take your questions. Um, so you can throw them in the chat or the Google document. Um, the organizers will flag to me if there's a question, or we might hold a question for the end. Uh, so here is my contact information. I'm on Twitter at Piping Hot Data. You can email me. You can check out my GitHub. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, any of that. Um, and part of this presentation um, was uh, built around a blog post that I published last year uh, called A Job Interview Presentation Inspired by the R Community. So we're going to be kind of going over four areas today. I'll first give you a little bit of background into myself. And then next, I'll talk about how I was a consumer in the R Community. And Third, we'll get into how I, that led me to become like a creator in the art community. And finally, fourth and last uh, contributor to the art community. So my background. There's a lot going on here. I've moved around a lot. I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. I did my undergraduate degree in Greenville, North Carolina. Then I moved to Atlanta, Georgia for 10 years. Uh, where I did graduate school at Emory and I worked for a bit at the CDC and at Emory University as a lecturer. Flew out to California for an exciting three years as a professor at Cal Poly Slow in the beautiful San Luis Obispo. You can see this is really far away from where I grew up. And I also had two daughters during that time as well. Um, so for many reasons, in July of 2018, uh, as a family, we decided it was time for us to return to the East Coast. We flew back to Williamsburg, Virginia, where my family was living. Um, I spent some time in there while we regrouped and figured out what we wanted to do next. And I was going through this career change also. I had been a college professor for six years, and I decided to do something different, that I wanted to work in the industry. I loved being a professor, but um, I wanted to grow in different directions. So here I am living with my family, trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. And in October of 2018, this is an email I found uh, that I wrote to a friend. Uh, as far as the job search goes, I haven't found the right fit yet. Now I'm focusing more on fully remote companies. In the meanwhile, I'm starting to do some side projects to keep me active and build an online presence. So hopefully my new blog will launch next week and I plan to get on Twitter as well. I'm a bit scared of that. <laughs> I've been reading up on Twitter etiquette, so hopefully I don't do anything dumb. <laughs> I don't know if any of you can relate to this, um, but you know, I think when you're in the job search, you hear all of this advice, like get on Twitter, get a blog, do this, build your online presence, things will be easier. And it's not easy to get started with it. It takes a lot of work. And this is exactly where I was three years ago. But then I got a little bite um, in December of 2018. On December 3rd, I applied for the position that I have currently. On December 5th, I had a phone screen. 
and they invited me to go on site for a job interview on December 17th. They gave me the presentation instructions um, for my job interview that they wanted me to give a presentation that they wanted the presentation to be about 20 minutes and focus on market research because I'm at a market research company and something innovative and something that I'm proud of, which sounds great, um, except I had been a college professor for six years. Um, I really didn't know much about market research and I didn't think like, you know, innovative ways of like teaching sampling distributions or statistics was pretty much what they had in mind. Um, so I had to come up with something different that might catch their attention. Is there any questions so far? All right. So, I mean, when you come up with something different, maybe what you do is you consume other people's ideas, tweak them, make them your own. So here I am entering consumer mode now. And when you're thinking about consuming things, there's a lot of content that you can consume from the R community. Um, and so when I think about the R community, here's kind of the things that I think about. I think about things like YouTube, podcasts, and blogs. I think about Tidy Tuesday and Slack and Twitter. And I think about meetups and conferences. And if you notice the coloring on here, kind of maybe the more darker colored cells might be the places where you interact and talk to people more rather than less. So there's, there's a lot of information out there that you can consume. And so I had just started um, becoming active on Twitter, trying the thing that people recommended. And it just kind of happened that right in the middle of my job interview process, David Robinson tweets about his Tidy Tuesday screencast. I think 2018 was also the year that um, Tidy Tuesday started. Um, and so David Robinson used Tidy Text to analyze what titles uh, get claps on Medium posts. And he has a little summary of what he found. And he has this YouTube video of um, him coding live. And also you can um, dig in the GitHub and uh, find the R script and code as well. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. And I watched the hour long video of that. And I started to think like, you know, I wonder if there's something that I can do with this that's, that's pretty similar. And so just to kind of give you an overview of what David Robinson did, um, he had the subject, which was medium articles and the data was already published for him. It was on Tidy Tuesday. He had this dependent variable, which is the number of claps that the medium articles got and independent variables were the words that were in those medium articles. He did some initial data exploration, like uh, top tags on those articles and common words and like responses like claps per tag. Um, and then he had some more formal analysis like you saw in this uh, tweet here. Uh, he did um, a network analysis of the words that were in those articles. And he also did a lasso model uh, to identify you know, words that might be more highly predictive of class. Um, and his deliverables were he had the R code on GitHub and the YouTube screencast. So it was a lot of information to consume. It was really cool analysis and it was done in an hour flat. And so I started to think about, well, maybe there's something I can do here with this. Um, and I also didn't really know how to put it together. So another thing I did in the community was I reached out on Twitter with a question in between there to try to figure out how I wanted to assemble my story. And I wanted to like do a presentation, but I was like hesitant about share again for various reasons. And Emily Ryder had this um, great um, idea to put a presentation together in a flex dashboard. It was super helpful. And there's lots of ways you can ask questions um, in the R community, right? So you might think about like asking questions on Stack Overflow, which people find pretty intimidating. Twitter, you can get like really quick questions in and really quick responses. And, and sometimes those can be mind blowing. Um, our studio community is also like a really friendly place to ask questions. And um, if you don't wanna ask questions in a public forum, you can do that in a private forum on R Ladies 
Slack. These are other ways you can access the community. And so I have all of these ideas and tools floating around in my head and now I've got to go create some something. Any questions before I move on? All right. So I decided I wanted to mirror what David Robinson had done. And so what I did is instead of looking at Medium articles, I noticed that my employer actually had a Twitter account. Um, and so I used our tweet to grab my employer's tweets. And I decided my dependent variable would be likes and retweets on those tweets. And notice um, uh, that's two dependent variables, not one. Uh, independent variables were uh, sets of hashtags that were on those tweets and, and individual words that were in those tweets. I did a lot of exploratory analysis of my employer's tweets, like top tags, common words, trends over time. I had to create new variables because it was a little bit messier than what had come out in, um, in the Tidy Tuesday Medium article. I did the same exact analysis that David Robinson did with a network um, analysis and lasso model. And I had a few different deliverables for my employer. So I did put my R code up on GitHub. I did not do a screencast of me doing this live, uh, but I did actually make some shiny apps and a flex dashboard presentation as well. Um, I watched David Robinson's video multiple times, kind of pause and replay places where I was struggling a little bit. And it took me way more than an hour to put all of this together. And so some of the reasons why it took me way more than hours, because there were some things I added, of course, that weren't in that original workflow, like actually getting the data myself um, through our tweet. That was another skill that I had to learn um, and some additional exploratory analysis and some additional deliverables that I added. And I'll also highlight what was new to me, which was pretty much most of it, right? Like, I'm new to Twitter as a user, um, and I'm new to grabbing Twitter data, and I don't really understand what likes or retweets mean or hashtags or any of that. Um, like, I'm pretty good with exploratory analysis, but honestly, I was really in a moment, I was pushing myself to use Tidyverse too, so I was learning a lot of new functions and R code at the same time there. Um, never done a network analysis, never done a lasso model was fairly new to like shiny apps and flex dashboard presentation. And so because of this like cumulative nature of everything being pretty new to me, like it was pretty in time intensive, but I was up for it because like these are all things I wanted to learn. And I knew like whether or not I got this job, like it was gonna be good for me to learn this stuff anyway. Um, and then the other thing I'll say about it is like, this also helped me in the interview process, right? Because not only am I like giving my employer an analysis of their Twitter account, and um, I'm also learning about them through the process, right? Like I am doing the research that I need to do to like learn what my employer is about, what they stand for, what they like, and um, what they kind of work they do. Hey, sorry, um, you actually have a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. How do you overcome the fear of asking the first question on Twitter or Stack Overflow. Yeah, so how do you overcome your fear of asking questions online? Like I think it's really hard to ask questions online at first, at least it was for me. Uh, I think I've only ever posted one question on Stack Overflow and it was one and done, it was fine. And I was like, that's good. <laughs> um, I do, post on our ladies for just kind of informal discussion and feeling out ideas. Um, I also post on our studio community and I post on Twitter. I think overcoming the fear for me, it's easier when you see role models asking questions online. Like, like maybe if I'm online and I see like Emily Ryder asking a question like, oh, like it's okay, you know, to ask questions online. I like seeing like other people ask questions online. And I think hopefully you do it and hopefully you get a positive response. And then that just kind of, once you do it that first time, hopefully it just gets easier and easier and you know it's okay. 
Are there any follow-ups on that? Um, there is a different question in the chat. Um, if you can't read it, it asks, by new variables, you mean looking at likes instead of retweets? Yes, I think referring to the screen here. Yeah, so those new variables, um, I did this like three years ago. I can go into my code on GitHub. Um, but basically like the, the data coming out of our tweet, um, like every, every tweet came out, right? So it was like, things I created were like, was this an original tweet, like where the person created original content or was this an actual retweet because that came in through the package or was this a quote tweet where like there was someone else tweeted and you know, they, they tweeted on top of it, right? So maybe I was like kind of, I think I filtered it to like their original content tweets, like what are they actually, you know, produce like saying themselves. So things like that. Um, other new variables that I created, you know, there were just things to look at, like, like it came with um, geographic information about where the tweets were coming from, which is also interesting to me because um, my employer has offices in the US and in the UK, and I could see that they are all geotagged to the UK. So you, like I could tell that the tweets were coming out of the UK office, um, and they were actually more representative of UK activities than the US office activities. Um, so yeah, there's just there's just more information you could get um, like in getting the data from our tweet. Other questions? Uh, not at the minute. The person just says thank you very much. Um, I'll let you know if there are any more. Sometimes it takes people a while to type and then it might come through in a few minutes. But yeah, of yeah I'll just let you know if there are any more. So here I am. I have my, um, my body of work assembled. Uh, you can go see. The technical details of this um, are written out very lightly in my blog post, as well as like the GitHub repo, which has all of the code for this um, and, and David Robinson's code and uh, the streamcast video as well. And so here are the deliverables that I put together. I had a flex dashboard presentation. I had my code on GitHub. And I actually produced two different shiny apps um, because at that time, it was also like a really exciting draw for me for this position was that my employer briefly mentioned during our phone screen that they were starting to explore shiny apps for deliverables. Um, so I thought, okay, let me see what I can do. The first shiny app was just kind of like a tweet lookup, like you could put in keywords and see what popped out on the tweets and like look at different years and stuff like that. Um, and the other one was a network analysis um, of the tweets that were like really closely mirrored um, what David Robinson had done. Um, you might wonder like why I put this in like two different shiny apps instead of like one with like tabs or something like that. I was exhausted. <laughs> I didn't have any more brain power to like fit anything else in. Like I probably did way too much already. Yeah. But I got the job, so it all worked out. Um, you know, the employer, you know, really appreciated um, like just kind of learning about themselves. It was like super fascinating for them. Like none of them were actually on Twitter. They had no idea like that they even had a Twitter account or what was being said. So they were just super interested, um, you know, in the subject matter itself um, and in the approach, you know, that I took to it. So like what went really well was that I uh, mirrored the Tidy Tuesday analysis. Like, you know, I tried to keep it in scope, but what I would have done differently was limit the scope. Like I didn't need two different dependent variables. I didn't need to look at hashtags and words. I didn't probably didn't need to make two shiny apps. Like hindsight, like I could have narrowed that focus down a little bit more and been a little bit easier on myself. Um, I did research my audience. So I knew that, um, you know, the people that I was presenting to, they weren't data scientists or statisticians, right? They are on the business and research side. And so I kind of knew to keep it pretty high level um, with, you know, lots of figures to support uh, my story and not um, text heavy. 
Um, I hosted the presentation online so I could just give them that flex dashboard URL um, and they can link to it. Um, I didn't use PowerPoint um, and I think that's a good thing for me because it's not my strong suit. You know, like I use the tools, you know, that I knew how to use. Um, and, and what I would have done differently, like just limited the scope and like now I don't use default DG plot theme colors anymore. So Alex, I see. Sorry, Ali, yeah. someone's asked another question in the chat. They said, how long did you spend on this project and how long do you actually spend in these fun sign projects like your blog post? So for this particular project, I probably put in 40 hours. <laughs> Again, <laughs> uh, I wasn't employed uh and i was looking for a job and again i knew it was something i could build upon um that was going to take me you know further wherever i went um so it was a lot my blog posts really vary in length um the quickest i've ever gotten a blog post done is three hours probably most of them are probably around 10 um and i probably have a few in there that I've spent like 20 to 40 hours on, um, depending on the code and what I'm trying to learn. But like I said, I wasn't afraid to put in the time because I knew it was going to build a foundation for me, right? Like. I knew that learning all of those functions and tidyverse, like I was gonna use those again. I knew it was gonna be really cool if I could pick up a network analysis again quickly or be more comfortable putting together shiny apps. Like, so I knew this wasn't like a one-off project where if it didn't go anywhere, it wasn't gonna be down the drain for me. Like it was gonna be something that's gonna help move me forward no matter where I end up next. So like. I wanted to build that foundation. That was my choice to put the time in it. And I'm glad I did. Hey, Ali, there's a follow up question to that. During your interview, how did you bring up the dashboards and the whole project? Did you have the chance to present something in some interviews you are not asked to present and it's mainly just talking? How would you bring it up? Or were you explicitly told to do a presentation or did you manage to wheedle it in? I think as well. Yeah, so up. for hopefully these links work. Uh, haven't touched on a few years. Um, but yeah, so I was told to do a presentation, right? And so this is what I did. Um, I hosted it on shinyapps.io and uh, hopefully it'll pop up again. And I just brought up this link. It's warming up. It's like you haven't touched me in a really long time. Or the link is dead, who knows? <laughs> there we go. And I brought up this link and I just kind of talked about, here's what we're doing. Here's an example tweet. Uh, here's my motivation uh, for doing this analysis on you. I wanted to learn about your values and initiatives and learn some new things. And I just kind of went through my dashboard and, and talked to them about it all. Um, did you have a follow up to that or did that answer your question? It doesn't look to be a follow up at the minute. I'll let you know if I can see. Can you not see the chat because you're sharing full screen or can you? I can see it. Oh, you can see it. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not know. always looking at it, but I can yeah. see it. So thank you. Yeah, okay. I keep watching those questions. So I did this thing, right? I put together this presentation that I put a lot of time together in and just kind of stayed in my GitHub and didn't do anything about it. But then I decided I'll become a contributor. Um, so, you know, like back in 2018, um, I had tried to start my blog. I didn't get very far. You know, for me at that point, it was it was a means to an end, like, oh, I'm supposed to start a blog if I'm going to get a job. And then I got my job and then I didn't need to keep up with my blog. Also, it was hard for me um, because 
I started in blog down. Um, blog down was hard uh, at the time. And I also wasn't comfortable asking questions online. I think I ran into like a hole that I couldn't get out of. And I never reached out and asked anyone for help. And so like between like not asking for help, not having blog down working and me having a job, like it just kind of like stopped trying for a little bit. And when you think about like contributing to the R community, you might think of like something like this, um, where Mara Averick talked about at the R Studio conference in 2018, contributing to tidyverse packages, right? And you might think of something like pull requests and issues and, and comments and doing the thing, but I, I I don't think that's the only way to contribute to the R community, right? Like that is certainly one way and it's a very valuable way, but contributing can be a lot more than that. And like, so it, if this is the landscape of different elements of our community, I should probably put Twitch on here now. Um, you know, you, you can contribute to any part of this in this landscape. And so kind of here are the ways where I'm contributing, right? And I'm on Twitter and I'm on Slack and I do these meetups and I write blog posts. I don't do all the things. I don't do the podcasts or participate in Tidy Tuesday or make YouTube videos. You know, you can pick and choose your niche. And so kind of like what I was talking about before, like I had those two blog posts and then like things fell flat. Like I had my job, um, and the time passed, you know, and I got my new job and then kind of COVID happened. I was at home, I was ready to try something new. Uh, maybe you dig in things a little bit. Also, um, the distill package started getting some more development to it and it made blogging a lot easier for me. It was a lot more intuitive. Um, and so then I picked it up again last year. Um, and since then uh, I've written 12 blog posts and I even volunteered to do my first Our Ladies workshop for Our Ladies Philly. Um, I did a introduction to package development workshop, which was a great experience. Um, I also was, and we are Our Ladies Twitter curator. Um, and so I just started joining in and doing different things. And I think we talked about this earlier that it's hard to ask questions online, but I actually think it's a form of contribution, right? Because if you ask a question online, you know, I think it motivates other people to ask questions online. And I think it also helps people answer questions that they might have been afraid to ask. And I don't, you know, you shouldn't be afraid that it's going to be a dumb question or anything because every question you have is valid no matter where you are, you know, learning R. And here's like a great example of asking a question online that was like meaningful for me. This is actually back when I was curating um, on Twitter um, for We Are Our Ladies. And Lisa Lenway asked like, is there a good spot to find an easy pull request, you know, practice asking for me and my students. So I retweeted this um, from the Our Ladies account and Allison Hill comes up with this suggestion, like I'm a huge fan of making PRs for yourself. And like, this was a workflow that I had not yet adopted on my blog. Excuse me, I have a little cough. So this was a workflow that I hadn't yet adopted on my blog, but I thought, you know, that's probably a pretty good idea that, you know, maybe I can get more comfortable with pull requests by doing this on my own personal projects. And I did start. It actually led to me like writing a blog post about some nice functionality with deployment on um, Netlify. Um, and I've been learning a lot. I've grown a lot since I um, started doing this though, you know, it was great that Lisa asked that question that I didn't even, you know, know that I had. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm trying to find my mute. Oh, there it is. Okay.
All right, Paolo, I see your question. Do you want to read it, Sophie? Yeah, I can do. Uh, he asked, I think this is more of an opinion than a question, but how did you manage to do finish that project in only 40 hours, considering you didn't know Flex Dashboard, Shiny, r -tweet packages, or even what a clap or a wheat tweet kind of worked? I mean, the learning curve is not average. Smiley face. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you for the compliment. 40 hours is an, it's an estimate. I don't know. It, it could have been more or it could have been less. Um, and I wasn't really asking questions online at that point in time. I think, you know, the key piece here for me, though, was that, like, I had the structure that I wanted to follow, right? Like, I had an hour-long tutorial that covered a lot of it. Like, there's no way I could have done it without this. Um, of course, I went, like, way overboard. And I, I will say another... Um, help that I had is my husband's actually a data scientist and he was um, better versed in some of this analysis than I was. Uh, so I could poke him and ask him some questions every now and then too. Yeah, but now he pokes me and asks me questions. So I would definitely encourage you to ask your questions. You know, don't be afraid of it. It's really important um, to normalize it and also, you know, for, to allow other people to share their expertise and to, for other people to learn from your questions. And so, yeah, that's kind of my journey, how I went from consumer to creator to contributor. And here's a list of things that you might want to check out if you want to get more involved in the R community. Um, so if you're on YouTube, here are some channels that you might want to check out. R Ladies Global, R for Data Scientists, uh, Data Science. Um, David Robinson and, and Julia Silge put out awesome screencasts of live coding. If you're nervous about Twitter, there's a whole book now on like Twitter for data scientists. Um, it's a great, I wish I had it when I started in 2018, I would have read it cover to cover before I got on Twitter. Uh, there's lots of great podcasts out there. Um, uh, the Build a Career in Data Science is an awesome podcast. Our weekly not so standard deviations towards data science. Um, there's different Slack communities you can join. So I love our ladies. Um, if you don't identify as a gender minority, you can join r for ds It's also a very welcoming Slack community that I'm on, but not super active in. And there's minorities in R. There's tons of conferences you can attend. The bigger ones are R Studio and News R, but there's lots of regional conferences as well. Tidy Tuesday is just an awesome place for people to contribute um, visualizations and, and get feedback. Uh, and there's meetups like this, our ladies, our users, and blogs. Um, if you want to kind of sign up and get a weekly digest of all the blogs out there, you can sign up for our weekly and our bloggers, and you'll get those in a feed. And there were a lot of um, resources that went into this presentation. I didn't do it by myself. Uh, Amy Tanaka has an awesome Anacon package, um, and I used her sharing and theme. Um, I deployed these slides um, by following Sylvia Kellan's uh, Deploying Sherrigan blog post. Uh, and she also helped me with some of these CSS elements for this slide. I didn't do it by myself. And um, I found this ggcal function um, by Jay Jacobs, which I used in uh, my original calendar pictures up here. Uh, modified those. Uh, so some of those are some of the technical things that went into it. Um, and just in terms of content, Emily Ryder has a great post on talk preparation. Uh, Our Lady Seattle had a great meetup on how to give a good talk. Uh, Emily Robinson and Jacqueline Nolis, they have the Build a Career in Data Science podcast. And episode 14 is about joining a community. It's a good listen. 
Um, and I also got on Twitter when I was trying to design that calendar for this presentation. And I said, here's what I have. And I don't like how it's looking. What, what would you change? And I got some really, really helpful and awesome suggestions uh, from the community. And it made this presentation better. So that's all I have today. Maybe a little bit quicker than what I delivered last time. I don't remember. Um, what I didn't say that I did say before, but I hope you found it worthwhile um, and helpful and interesting and all of that. So thank you for joining me. Sarah, um, well, there's one more question in the chat. And if anyone else has any questions, please do either write them in the chat or um, unmute yourself and ask Shannon yourself. Um, I think I'll stop the recording now.